you know how difficult it is to wear a mask with glasses? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, Interpretation of Beauty. Today I want to talk about the dreaded mask knee. Um, I was gonna film this video fully made up and just put in little bits of what spots are, what um, blackheads are, all of that, but I decided there's nothing worse than someone talking to you about a problem that you're suffering with and they look flawless or you can't see anything in their skin. So what I've decided to do is I am freshly showered just out of the shower. I have nothing on my face. I haven't even moisturized as since I showered. And I'm going to show you how I'm suffering with maskne at the moment. So what is maskne? Maskne is acne caused by masks. It's not technically acne. They're acneic spots. So just because you're getting spots from your masks doesn't mean that you now have acne skin. Maskne can happen to someone with an oily skin or someone with a dry skin. It is just, it's a different change in circumstances which is happening to the skin. We've never really seen this before. So it's something that the beauty industry are terming as maskne, the same way they do bacne, checkne, all the different types of acne that you can get. A lot of the times with the maskne what we're seeing is people with drier skin, the friction is causing the dead skin cells to rub off but instead of shedding because normally they'd shed off into the air, into the atmosphere, what we're seeing now is because the mask is keeping them on the skin, those skin cells are going into pores and blocking pores. When you're wearing a mask not only is a bit of material rubbing against your skin, it's also we're breathing into a bit of cotton which is creating a perfect environment and breeding ground for bacteria on our skin. What I'm going to show you on my skin today is the bits that I've been noticing that I feel have been caused by masks. Um, the first thing you're going to notice when we zoom in on my face is I'm a picker. We're all not perfect. Ideally we wouldn't pick spots but I've got anxiety and one of the, my coping mechanisms, I pick my skin and I bite my nails. So I'm fully aware that I shouldn't be doing it, but it doesn't mean that when I'm absentmindedly watching TV at night or if I see a whitehead on my face, I'm not gonna pop the spot. Again, it's not something we recommend, but towards the end of the video, I will go into talking about pickers who, if it's gonna happen, how we can do the best we can do for our skin to give our skin the best chance of healing after we have picked a spot. I have media going on at the moment, I have blackheads, I have a rough surface texture um, and I did have whiteheads. Um, last night I realised that most of my whiteheads are gone and I was really disappointed that I wouldn't get to show you one but luckily enough my skin came through for me and I have a whitehead just above my eyebrow. So without further ado I'm going to zoom in on my face here, I'm going to get the viewfinder up zoom in and show you what I'm talking about here. So first thing's obvious, I'm a picker. The all down along my jaw, my skin is really uneven texture at the moment. It's quite now, the redness is from post sensitivity from a shower. So this is what we call a whitehead. Here is Amelia. This was a white head but it sort of turned into a black head now again. Got a few blackheads on my nose. Um, I would normally suffer from blackheads due to dehydration that I can't actually get out even with using um, products and getting extractions done but I definitely have noticed they've gotten more. Got post-inflammatory pigmentation on my skin which is these little red circles from picking. I've got another white head starting here. I find as well I've started getting spots behind my ears from maskne too. From, not from maskne but from wearing masks. So first of all I want to go through with you what causes and what are the different little things you'll see on the skin when you're suffering from mac, mac, macne? Maskne. So your blackheads. Um, in the industry we call them comedones. I'm going to call them blackheads because it's way easier to pronounce. On your face you have loads of little pores which are basically just little hole follicles where the hair follicles, the downy fur hair that you have on your skin comes from. At the base of all of these follicles there is a sebaceous gland. That sebaceous gland provides oil for the hair and for the skin 
travels up the hair follicle onto the skin. A lot of people think blackheads mean their skin is dirty. So many people come in to me and talk about, oh, you know, I feel like my skin just needs a good clean, you know, I feel it looks dirty. The reason blackheads are called blackheads is because they turn that sort of deep, dark black shade. That's not dirt, that's not leaving makeup on, that's not um, someone doesn't clean their skin properly. What has happened there is the oil gets trapped in the pore by it either it sticks to the dead skin cells or maybe a dead skin cell has been on top of the pore the oil hasn't been able to get out the oil gets trapped in the pore when the top layer of oil hits the air it oxidizes so it's basically like metal rusting um that's oxidation it's the same process and oxidation turns oil black so it's yes not removing your makeup properly can cause something to block a pore but it isn't actually the makeup dirt causing that black colour. And whiteheads are formed in a sort of similar way. When that oil is trapped, sometimes it is trapped and there is still a layer of dead skin cells across the surface of that pore. What happens in that case more than likely is the bacteria, it's called Acneus bacteria, absolutely adores that oil. It hasn't had a chance to oxidise because it hasn't hit the air because it's still trapped and the bacteria starts to eat away at the oil. Bacteria need food, they need warmth and they need darkness. Down the bottom of the pore covered with oil they have their food, they have their warmth and they have their darkness which is why you get inflammation and you get that sore pustule which is your white head. Whiteheads can be very painful and sore because when there is an infection we experience inflammation and swelling. Um, a lot of the times this can happen below the surface before we actually see the whitehead come to the surface. So Melia are a little bit different in the fact that there is no pores in the areas that Melia are found. So around the eye area, what happens is oil builds up under the skin and as there is no pore, there is nowhere for the oil to go. It won't get oxygen, there won't be anything at it. So it just forms a little lump. Some people call them milk spots, normally a white lump. In order to get rid of Amelia, you either have to massage the oil to um, liquefy it again and then your body can reabsorb it or you have to get someone to lance it, which is, means they poke a hole in the skin to help the, the hard lump of oil escape. In Ireland, you can only get that done by a nurse or doctor practitioner. Um, legally, skin therapists aren't allowed. So if you are suffering from melia, I would recommend going to see a dermatologist. Best thing is light exfoliation in that area with something like lactic acid and massaging the area. So now that we know what these problems are caused by and what they look like, what can we do to help them? So the first ingredient is an ingredient called salicylic acid. It is an antibacterial ingredient, so it will prevent the bacteria spreading, growing and causing those inflammation and those sore spots in the whiteheads. Um, I'm not going to say you're going to get rid of them with salicylic, but it will definitely help control the population of bacteria in the skin. It's decongesting, it exfoliates and it's brilliant at slugging off those dead skin cells so they don't get into the pores and cause that blockage and the congestion. It also helps soothe and bring down inflammation so it's a really brilliant product to use. Now there is a warning if you have an aspirin allergy you can't use salicylic acid as they are from the same derivative. Salicylic acid can dry out the skin if you overuse it. So I tend to use my salicylic acid either in a wash form or a spot treatment where I can target the area that has too much oil. It does regulate oil on the skin, but sometimes it can overregulate oil and cause the skin to stop producing the oil that it needs. The next ingredient is niacinamide. Niacinamide regulates oil. It is anti-inflammatory and it actually helps with any of the red post-inflammatory pigmentation that you see on the skin. What it also does is it shrinks the pores. So pores are openings in the skin. Some products will claim to close pores. I always say you can't close a pore. The pore is a hole that is meant to be there in the skin. We can only reduce the size of the hole. The next ingredient is lactic acid. It is a super hydrating exfoliator. It helps shrink the size of pores, but it's also really great for sensitive skin as it's one of the ingredients that's gonna cause the least amount of reactivity on the skin. It helps increase water retention in the skin and is brilliant at keeping the barrier. So it is great for a more sensitive client. Glycolic acid is the next ingredient. 
Glycolic is antibacterial and it helps regulate the dead skin cells on the surface layer of the skin. Glycolic is like a hurricane, it goes right down into the pores so it helps slough off the dead skin cells that are in the pores as well that cause those blockages too. My all time favourite product, Retinol, also known as Vitamin A. It also stimulates the production of new skin cells so it helps regulate the amount of dead skin cells on the surface layer of the skin. Retinol also penetrates really deep into the skin so it actually creates change in the dermis of the skin below our top five layers. It also is a brilliant communicator so retinol will tell the sebaceous gland that it doesn't need to produce that much oil. Because it goes so deep though it can be that little bit more sensitizing so we would recommend using this less frequently and definitely building up your tolerance. Now unfortunately retinol cannot be used when pregnant. Brilliant product when you're pregnant is blue green algae. It is almost a natural version of retinol say. It's a brilliant antioxidant, anti-inflammatory and it's antimicrobial microbial as well. Blue green algae also fights inflammation and is brilliant for the red marks that you see post spot as well. And finally the last ingredient I would recommend is enzymes. Enzymes are like Pac-Man for the skin. They go around and eat away at all the dead skin cells. Different enzymes are papain, you've got your pineapple and you've got your pumpkin. 3P enzymes are my favourite cheese on my skin. Because enzymes work superficially they're not as irritating as well so they're safe to use during pregnancy and on more sensitive skins. Obviously you will have to look into food allergies to make sure that any of the enzymes that you're using are derivative from any allergies you may have. And pickers finally I'm speaking to you. Of course we would advise not picking. When you squeeze you can weaken the pore. If there is bacteria it can burst from the pore and infect surrounding follicles which is a lot of the time why you end up you have one spot and then you've picked it and then eventually you have two or three more spots around because the bacteria has seeped into different pores and has started the process of developing a spot in those pores as well. What happens is when you pick you weaken the follicle wall. It is more inclined to fill up again with more sebum and it's more inclined inclined to get bacteria again because it has that weakness there. So you are more inclined to get spots in that area. And then also when you pick, you're more inclined to get your post-inflammation pigmentation. Caucasian skin, it's pink post-inflammation. In a darker skin, you can end up with a little brown spot or even a really dark black spot. Sometimes people get an absence of color with the darker skin and they end up with a little white spot there. If you are gonna pick, what do we do? First of all, wash your hands and wash your face before you're gonna pick. Preferably wash it in something like glycolic or salicylic, something that is antibacterial. So you are removing any bacteria from your hands and your face before you go and attack that spot. When you are squeezing the spot, do not go in from both sides and just squeeze as hard as possible. Don't use nails because you can cause marking on the skin. What you wanna do is go in as close to the spot as you can and then you want to pull the skin outwards and then wiggle the fingers back together. This wiggly motion is going to loosen up the sides of the follicle and it's going to help you push the stuff out as the fingers get closer. And finally once you finish and you've gotten the pus out of the spot or you've gotten the blackhead out, you want to use something like salicylic acid. That's going to antibacterialize again, it's going to help constrict the pore and it's going to hopefully prevent further spots. Salicylic will help heal the skin as well so you should be less inclined to get your post inflammation pigmentation. And of course the best recommendation is that we don't pick them and that we let them go through the natural cycle on our skin. A great thing you can do if you have a salicylic acid toner or a serum is you can spot treat that spot multiple times a day depending on the strength of the salicylic acid and the instructions of the product and you can spot treat that to help bring down the spot a little bit faster if something happens the night before a big day say. All right so I hope you've learned something with me. As always if you are worried about your skin and you are concerned about something I'm giving you advice as a qualified skin therapist but there's nothing quite like having hands-on advice from a therapist or a doctor so please don't be afraid to go see a skin therapist we've seen it all or go see a doctor if you're that concerned about something. Okay I will see you in my next video. Bye! I'm Natalie, I'm a qualified skin, ther skin therapist. I'll get that right one of these days.